Welcome back friends. We all know that SpaceX Super Heavy has just been relocated to the orbital launch mount, commonly known as the chopstick. The company's CEO and creator referred to it as such because of the manner it catches the spacecraft and returns it to its rocket mount in readiness for its next flight. What's next? Let's find out. Before we proceed, a big hello to everyone across the globe. If you are new to our channel, we warmly welcome you and are glad to have you on board. Make sure to check our other videos from the SpaceX updates and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep yourself updated from the very latest. Let us dive right in. Earlier today, Musk revealed that SpaceX's orbital test flight would take place shortly and shared several first look photographs of the towering rocket that would be used. Everyday Astronaut disclosed on Twitter that SpaceX's orbital launch vehicle was dubbed Chopstick by the company's eccentric CEO. He cited Elon Musk, who initially dubbed this business Chopstick, meaning the typical instrument used by Asians to eat their food. The Catch Tower, also known as the Orbital Launch Tower, functions similarly to a chopstick holding the spacecraft upright before launch and catching it when it descends from a mission. Consider the Super Heavy to be a metaphorical spring roll and the catch tower to be the chopstick, holding the spacecraft upright, ready for launch and return to the planet. That sounds tempting. <laughs> Musk claimed that they borrowed the chopstick concept from Karate Kid, a 1984 coming-of-age action film about a kid the Karate Kid was an important symbolism for the chopstick in catching a fly, implying that if a person catches the insect, they have already accomplished something significant. The CEO of SpaceX saw this and stated that it was pretty near to genuine, before continuing to explain the mechanism and method of the return mission. Super Heavy would not be landing on a drone ship or returning to the launch pad because it would need to be attached to its mount the entire time it is on Earth. Furthermore, it would prioritize the protection of the spacecraft's grid fins and the launch mount in the event of a failure. The full stack of Super Heavy and Starship would not remain on Earth alone because both would be a waste of their capabilities. It targets for orbit and then returns to the surface to test its ability to fly and land. There was no word on the specific date of flight, although it did coincide with SpaceX's target of July. Super Heavy is the first stage of SpaceX's two-stage, totally reusable Starship system, which is being developed to transport people and cargo to Mars and other distant locations. Starship, a 165-foot-tall spacecraft, serves as the top stage. Starship spacecraft prototypes have previously flown. In May, for example, a vehicle known as SN15 successfully completed a 6.2-mile-high test flight into the skies of South Texas. Super Heavy has yet to take to the skies, but SpaceX hopes to change that shortly. Speaking of the rocket, even from space, SpaceX's Super Heavy rocket appears to be massive. Maxar Technologies' Worldview 3 satellite captured a stunning image of SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas on August 9th, where the company is building and testing its Starship Deep Space Transportation System. SpaceX has rolled Starship's first orbital class Super Heavy booster from its Starbase factory to the launch pad for the second time in five weeks, ahead of a requiring and multifaceted test campaign. The 69-meter, 225-foot-tall rocket known as Super Heavy Booster 4, or B4, first rolled to the launch pad around August 3rd after SpaceX technicians fitted it with 29 Raptor engines in a single night. The two stages of a Starship were stacked to their full height on August 6th, briefly creating the largest rocket ever assembled, followed by orbital-class Starship prototype S-20 a few days later. Ship 20 was then quickly returned to the construction site, where SpaceX employees worked for an additional 10 days. SpaceX installed 29 Raptors on Booster 4 for the second time in less than two weeks. After completing qualification testing at SpaceX's Central Texas development facilities, all of those engines are expected to be ready for flight, or at the very least, static fire testing, this time round. 
surprisingly, each of Super Heavy's outer ring of 20 Raptor Boost engines is expected to have its own small umbilical panel connecting to the orbital launch pad's ground systems. Most of the individual engine connectors had yet to be installed when Booster 4 was installed on the orbital launch mount, and it is unclear whether SpaceX was able to test the complex mechanisms prior to launch. SpaceX wants to test Super Heavy Booster 4 at the orbital launch site. However, any booster testing will need the shakedown of the orbital pad's large, custom-built tank farm, as well as a wide range of other ground infrastructure that did not exist at the start of 2021. Qualification for Booster 4 is no less difficult, as no Super Heavy has ever been completely tested. Super Heavy Booster 3 has completed a partial cryogenic proof test and a static fire with three Raptor engines. Although SpaceX has never completely loaded a Super Heavy with more than 3,000 tons of propellant and has never static fired more than three Raptor engines at the same time, the static fire test campaign is perhaps the most unknown aspect of Super Heavy Booster 4's certification. Regardless of how SpaceX gets there, the last obstacle will most likely be firing all 29 of B-4's Raptor engines, which may provide up to 5,400 tons of thrust, making Super Heavy the most powerful rocket booster ever created. Simultaneously, SpaceX began reinstalling Raptors on Ship 20, which is presently docked at the suborbital pad B, in preparation for Starship's first proof tests and static fire tests. Keeping an eye out for more information on SpaceX's plans to test the first orbital class Starship and Super Heavy rocket. Booster 3 will never take flight. However, the 29-engine Booster 4 is being prepared for the Starship program's maiden orbital test flight. On August 5th, the massive vehicle was placed onto the orbital launch vehicle. A day later, technicians assembled the tallest rocket in history. That's a reference to the US Federal Aviation Administration's current environmental review of the Starbase orbital launch location and approval appears to be at least a month away. Given that the FAA will allow public comments for 30 days following the release of its draft review, which has yet to occur. Worldview 3 was launched into orbit in August 2014 by Maxar subsidiary Digital Globe. The keen-eyed satellite can resolve objects as small as 12 inches, 31 centimeters, on our planet's surface. With all this, we have come to the end of our video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. We appreciate your love and support for our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, see ya.